provide multiple transport options for the storage traffic. Fiber channel is the most reliable, secure, and highly available transport option today where the enterprise customers put their bread and butter, all their mission critical applications on the fiber channel storage. Cisco with their MDS platform has been supporting fiber channel for a number of years. We have even the IBM mainframes, they use fiber channel, FICON, we support that also. SCSI, FCP, over the fiber channel, Cisco MDS support that. And recently, there has been a lot of enhancements in the flash world where the NVMe protocol is rapidly replacing the SCSI protocol and all flash arrays are using NVMe SSDs. And when you put those NVMe storage over the transport, guess what? Fiber channel is the most reliable option available today because the networks are already there, fiber channel. And it can coexist with your SCSI SSD flash and the new NVMe all on the same network, also the FICON on the same network. NVMe provides a very high speed, low latency network. It is expensive today, the prices are falling down. So when you put your mission critical application on NVMe storage over the fiber channel, network analytics becomes very important. In other words, storage traffic being bi-directional, you know, you send a write and the response come back and all that, you have to know exactly what's going on in your network. So Fiber channel today being a 32 gig, and very soon it's gonna be going to 64 gig, so analytics becomes very important. So to talk about MDS ASICs, today in our lab we have Deepak, who is the senior director of ASIC team, and Rajesh, who's the senior manager, and who's also the lead on the fiber channel ASICs. Mm -hmm. Okay, let me uh, walk you uh, through the MDS architecture. Uh, so this slide is of a line card. Uh, MDS um, allows a highly scalable, uh, has a highly scalable architecture. And in this slide you can see three uh, 32 gig fiber channel chips. And they connect to the crossbar uh, through those crossbar chips which is uh, highlighted on the back. Um, so each of these crossbar chips um, allows a uh, high bandwidth connection to the fabric cards, and you have multiple fabric cards on the back, um, and the fabric cards are highly redundant. Uh, so if one of them goes down, you know, the others would carry the load through. And then we have the uh, arbiter chip in here. The arbiter provides uh, fairness across all the ports, and it's non-blocking. Uh, and this architecture has been, uh, you know, very resilient. It's been multiple generations of, um, um, you know, line cards. Uh, you know, we have been able to uh, productize it uh, for different speeds from 8 gig uh, all the way up to 32 gig in this chassis. And what about the 64 gig fiber channel? Do you need a new chassis or will this chassis work for that too? No, the same chassis will hold good for 64 gig. Uh, so that's the uh, beauty of this, um, you know, multiple generations of, uh, from a customer's point of view, they would be, the, you know, transition from speed to speed on the same chassis, and it provides all the same benefits of non-blocking uh, um, and uh, fair across all the ports. All those abilities have always been there in this chassis. Yeah. <laughs> so let me cover analytics. Uh, Kamal alluded to uh, analy analytics at the start of the video. Um, so. Basically, the options we have to get analytics is uh, we could tap um, and send it to an appliance device. Uh, there are some challenges on that, which is it could be disruptive or there could be a degradation in the signal quality. Now, the other option would have been to actually, uh, you know, span the packets. Um, now, this is not a scalable solution. Uh, that. The, that left us with one choice, which probably is the best choice to be able to get analytics, which is actually try to integrate this solution inside our ASIC. Uh, and to talk about that, uh, Rajesh uh, LG uh, will cover more details on that front. Uh, okay. okay, thank you, Deepak. So, uh, in fiber channel 32 gig ASIC, what we did is move the uh, tap inside ASIC, as uh, Deepak mentioned. 
and we also did move the analytics engine on board. Uh, so, there is a processor running on uh, our line card which correlates all the packets and computes the metrics and provides you the information directly on the CLI. Uh, you do not need any external appliance to have an analytics engine with our 32 gig cards. Uh, in case you want to send the data to an uh, external appliance, we provide that option as well. Uh, we send it to the soup and uh, through the soup we can send out the data through a uh, ethernet port to your appliance. So, uh, DCNM SAN Insights uh, uh, provides a nice visualization of the data that we can export. Okay. So, let me show you what happens inside our ASIC. So, the packet comes in uh, through our FC ports, uh, the packet is parsed, we determine what kind of packet it is, uh, form a key for uh, the, the lookup and we send it to the forwarding engine. And in, in the forwarding engine, uh, that is where we decide uh, where the, whether the packet needs to be sent to the analytics port or not. And this is fully configurable, uh, you have uh, all the options that you would normally have in your uh, uh, forwarding or ACL list. So, the uh, using the ACL list for uh, uh, selecting the packets that sent to analytics give you a full flexibility on what you want to be, uh, you want to see in the analytics port. So, after that uh, the packet the continues its flow through the uh, or VOQ in, uh, ingress uh, packet assembly, the, so the crossbar. Uh, sorry to interrupt. Uh, so, sure. where does the arbiter plays a role in here? So, the packet okay. comes into the, we have a virtual output queuing architecture. Correct. So, the packet com, uh, comes in and it, it goes into the virtual output queue uh, uh, and stays there. And then, uh, depending on where it wants to go, it sends a request to the central arbiter and the central arbiter is arbitrating between the multiple sources that want to send to the output, same output. Right? So, the central arbiter then uh, allocates the grant fairly to all the requesters mm -hmm. and this is how we uh, maintain so fairness. So, this provides the fairness among all the flows, so no one flow can hog up the switch. Exactly, exactly. Okay, good, yes. thank you. Yeah. So, once the grant comes, the packet continues its uh, path through the packet assembly, it goes to the crossbar and to the fabric ASIC. The fabric cards uh, switch the packet between the line cards and then it comes back on the egress line card and comes back to the crossbar ASIC and it comes back into the F32 egress port side. So, since there are multiple paths to the crossbar, we need a reorder buffer and after that we have uh, various port scheduling uh, uh, such as uh, DWR fairness uh, for the fairness or um, for allocating bandwidth uh, it differently to different priority queues. We support all these features in the port scheduler and the egress, the parsing and the echo features and then it goes uh, to the transmit logic, the MAC and uh, FC ports and out on the link. Okay. So, where does the analytics uh, come in here? So, this is the place where we uh, tap the packet on the packet path into the analytics engine. So. Like, like Deepak was saying, an optical tap which is outside of a mm -hmm. switch. So, we have figured it out an innovation at Cisco, mm -hmm. how to tap the packet inside on the ASIC itself mm -hmm. as mm -hmm. the packets are going without mm -hmm. disrupting the flow and without introducing any other latency on it. Exactly. This is a question we get uh, quite often when you have a tap, does this affect our my normal traffic flow? It does not at all. It has, it is just a tap, uh, it does not affect your normal traffic flow in any way. Okay. okay. So, once the packet is tapped, it is sent into the, a copy it rather is sent into the uh, analytics engine. Okay. So, uh, we tap the packet and then send it to the analytics uh, engine, analytics collector rather inside the ASIC. Uh, the packet you can see uh, is tapped from both ingress and egress path and this is required to correlate the packets of a full exchange uh, unlike uh, in the ethernet world. So, once it comes in here, uh, we do have different uh, arbitration or scheduling priorities here um, and then it uh, goes out through an Ethernet link onto onboard NPU. The NPU is the one which uh, has the database, so it correlates the packets that are coming on the ingress and egress sides, um, forms a full picture of an exchange and computes the metrics related to the exchange and uh, at, and even at a higher level, it, it has a hierarchical view of an exchange or at an uh, initiator targeted level 
or uh, initiate target uh, none level. So you have various options provided uh, on the hierarchies that you want to get the statistics on. Excellent. So now the analytics engine, an NPU, it takes the data from the on-chip collector mm -hmm. and now it further sends it out to outside DCNM to further visualization purposes? Yes, so it, it sends the packet out also through a uh, Google RPC call and then um, uh, it's passed and you form an elastic data store there and it forms a baseline which you can, um, it can be used for anomaly detection or uh, uh, getting your baseline or metrics. And, uh, and then it goes to the presentation layer and it's presented on a nice GUI in various ways in the application. So, uh, Deepak, I see now you have an analytics engine on the line card. You have crossbars, arbiters, and you have 32 gig. So where, what are you, what are your engineers now looking at the ASIC innovations? What other, what can we expect in 64 gig? Yeah, so um, in our next generation uh, 64 gig ASIC, uh, we, there's a lot of innovation we talked about, uh, thought about rather. Um, so one of the main things was definitely the analytics part. There were other aspects to it also. Uh, let me go over that. So if you look uh, this slide versus the previous slide, a lot of things vanished. That is, what that means is a lot of these uh, crossbar ASICs, Arbiter, everything got integrated. Uh, three of those slices became one slice. Uh, in addition to this, now the next step was to actually... Um, uh, sorry, one second. You also increased the number of the ports all the way to 48. So yes. single chip is handling 48, right. 64 gig fiber channel ports. That's correct, Excellent. yeah. So it's um, everything pretty much on the line card. The only thing there is this chip, pretty much. Excellent. That was and our it's a goal. Non-blocking full line rate. Non-blocking full line rate. Um, the analytics engine inside all the ports, uh, plus the yes. crossbar interface and the arbiter. Everything. So we'd love yeah. to get inside of this analytical engine, Rajesh. And yeah. uh, if you may please show us how this analytical engine works on 64 gig chip. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Sure. So in our 64 gig ASIC, we took a major step ahead uh, on the analytics front. So uh, in, in this ASIC, we support full line rate uh, analytics on every single port, uh, irrespective of packet sizes. Right? Each and every packet that come in uh, can be analyzed without a single drop. There is no um, a sampling involved here. So you have full visibility. You don't need to worry. You'll miss anything here. Okay. So the packet walkthrough uh, is similar to what we have already seen in the 32 gig. Uh, the main difference is the database has moved uh, on chip now. Um, now when you move on chip, uh, you'll be wondering uh, what are the protocols that we support and uh, would it become outdated if I want to uh, uh, add more uh, protocols. For example, NVMe, do we support Exactly. Yeah. Yes, we already support NVMe on chip. Yeah, so I think just to add to that, um, we made a lot of announcement for NVMe uh, specifically. Uh, the number of queues um, we doubled uh, just to be able to, you know, uh, support whatever is needed from NVMe standards point of view. Uh, and the second thing is even from uh, analytics engine, uh, we are able to collect all the stats from an NVMe point of view also. So it's not just a fiber channel. Uh, you know, a SCSI protocol only, we, we have the capability to do more in this uh, generation chip. So uh, the packet that's coming in is paused and we go deep into the packet into the SCSI and NVMe headers and extract fields from it and then it is sent into the analytics engine. And here we form uh, a database uh, which is based on initiator, target, um, uh, and again, uh, depending on the scale level, if you want more detail, we can go into IT and uh, initiator, target, and uh, LUN, uh, or, the, or, or, or yes. the connection uh, connection ID in case of NVMe. Okay. So Rajesh, your point here, mm -hmm. so the difference here is by putting an analytical engine, you're really analyzing Mm -hmm. the flow in both directions, mm -hmm. not only the flow, you're even going deeper inside, you can map a particular OX ID or LUN number and just look at those statistics only. And mm -hmm. I see you have a screen out that what you can view particular mm -hmm. metrics out of those flows at the line rate we're talking here because exactly. NVMe is very fast. Yes. 
Okay. Um, so, the packet coming in uh, from both ingress and egress are correlated inside the chip uh, and we form populate a database uh, based on the initiator and target. Um, now, we have a uh, way to um, go inspect deeper into an IT flow in case you see the any anomaly in the metrics for that IT, you can actually uh, set a flag and then go dig deeper at an IT and LUN level or a IT and a CAD level for NVMe and get a more detailed breakup of what is happening and which exactly is the uh, offending flow or the flow that you want to investigate further. So, what kind of a metrics you can see with this uh, analytical okay. uh, We have a whole bunch of metrics like exchange completion time, uh, initiation uh, time um, or uh, outstanding IOs. So, a whole bunch of them, uh, I am showing you just a few of them here and there are quite a few that you can, uh, as you can see here. Uh, it so it that, includes the error conditions as well, the boards. So, the as boards. you see a problem, mm -hmm. you can set particular metrics or it will give you all those. I think, I believe there are over 70 different metrics it mm -hmm. can generate yes, over a flow. Right. So, you really can dig deeper at any level you want to figure mm -hmm. it out, you, whether your application, you're running a SAP or mm -hmm. exchange, mm -hmm. you can get deeper into it, why mm -hmm. the response time is low, whether it's the network problem, whether it's the mm -hmm. application problem or it's a storage problem. Mm -hmm. So this gives you a single visibility regardless of who's ever vendor the storage is, whatever application is running, mm -hmm. since you're tapping analytics right on the chip, mm -hmm. it is common to mm -hmm. all flows going mm -hmm. through that. Yes. Excellent. Yes. Um, and one more point I would like to mention here is the timestamping is done with inside the ASIC, so we have nanosecond level accuracy. Oh. Unlike where we send it outside, it sits, sits in a buffer, and then oh. you timestamp it. Uh, you Which could, is you very could see important very because the exactly. NVMe dictates that the performance yes. has to be very yes. fast. Yes, the time that it sees is what the time the switch sees. Excellent. Right, it's not something outside. Excellent. Okay. okay. And uh, we periodically export the uh, table that we have collected uh, to the NPU. So, the NPU builds a, a bigger database uh, with a longer history of what has been going on. And then the processing is uh, similar to what we already explained for the 32 gig. It sends the uh, DCNM through a gRPC and then it uh, uh, creates the database and keeps it there for visualization. Okay. Um, so, Rajesh, um, this is a 64 gig. Now, what about I'm a customer, I have a 32 gig deployed from Cisco mm -hmm. on MDS. Mm -hmm. Can I get similar analytics on 32 gig also today, which is shipping? The analytics uh, is already launched on our 32 gig line cards and you do get uh, all these metrics that I showed you here uh, already. Um, their uh, limitation would be on the scale side maybe which we have uh, enhanced this to significantly in the 64 gig uh, ASIC. So as speed increase, you need the faster analytics, mm -hmm. you need mm -hmm. the sample time. I mean, mm -hmm. you're not sampling, you're watching every flow, every exactly. packet. Right. Yeah. So you have to dig into the headers, mm -hmm. packets are coming faster. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. that's where the on-chip analytics helps. But for 32 gigs, mm -hmm. which is on NPU, the analytics, mm -hmm. that's still you get the similar mm -hmm. yes. impact on the application. Exactly. There is no, no no sampling here. So, it, uh, if the problem with sampling is uh, in case there are elephant flows, most of your samples will give you data only about elephant flows. The mice flows are completely missed out. Uh, yes. But here in this case, we are seeing looking at each and every packet. So, you know, you, even your mice flows, you will get know if anything is wrong with them. Excellent. So, guys, as NVMe becomes more popular and the choice for the storage vendors, mm -hmm. The networking guys, the fiber channel transports, have to provide analytical capability live within the microseconds, within milliseconds, figuring it out, what happened to over 70 metrics we talked about. And once you move that on chip, that is the best solution, not outside the chip where collectors may take some time. So doing analytics live on chip, giving you all the metrics about NVMe and SCSI. This is what Cisco Innovations is coming, 64 and 32 gig, which is shipping today. Well, thank you very much, uh, Deepak, and thank you, Rajesh, very much.